Spring security applications come with a default login page built out of the box that looks something like this. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom login screen and I will build a login page that looks like this. I know it's not pretty, but at least it's yours. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how you can override the default Spring login page and create your own login page, which provides a way for you to style it and make it look the way you like. All right, we're going to start by going to Spring Initializer at start.spring.io and I'm going to choose my uh, group name and package name, the artifact name, Iota Java Brains, and this is a Spring Security Custom Login. I'm going to leave all the other things as the default, and now I'm going to choose the dependencies. I'm going to need web and uh, security. These are the only two that I need for now, so I'm going to generate project, download it, and open it in IntelliJ. All right, so let me actually run this project. I'm gonna to switch to the packages view. I'm just gonna run it as is, right, without any changes. And uh, if you've been following along this series, you should know that this is going to result in a default login being created, an out-of-the-box login being created, and uh, it'll provide you with a login screen, which allows you to enter that username and password, uh, which is generated, as you see over there on the screen. And uh, let me actually open localhost 8080. See that? It redirects to login, slash login. And here is the login screen that comes out of the box with Spring Boot, right? We didn't write this. It came out of the box. It came with a default user out of the box as well. Now, we want to update this. We want to have our own HTML show up in this particular place. Now, the thing to remember is that the slash login actually has two endpoints. The first endpoint is when you make a GET request to slash login, which is this page that you're seeing. It's an HTML page. And then when you enter the username and password and click on sign in, it's going to make a POST request to the same slash login route. All right, so both of them are out of the box with Spring Boot and Spring Security. But what we want to do is just change this HTML page. We don't want to mess with what accepts the username and password after the user has submitted it. Right? So the post request to slash login should be unaffected. All we need to do is modify the get request to slash login. We need to say, hey, Spring Security, when somebody does a get request to slash login, don't show your default password, uh, username and password page, show my page instead. All right, so how do we do this? I'm gonna switch back to my uh, code and uh, we're gonna start by creating a class which configures Spring Security. I'm going to create a new Java class, and uh, I'm going to call this Security Config. And uh, this is going to extend the Web Security Configurer Adapter class. And uh, this is the way you can extend some of the default behavior that comes with Spring Security. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to override a method uh, which gives me access to the HTTP object. Click on Override Methods. And um, I'm going to go to configure, which gives me access to HTTP security. Now, the default behavior for this, if I hadn't overridden this, right, was something like this. Okay, so what I'm doing here, what I've pasted here, is what would have happened by default if I hadn't overridden this. Okay, so it's basically authorizing requests, making any request be authenticated, and then it's doing form login and HTTP basic. Everything's good, but now, this is where I need to provide information for Spring Security to say, hey, don't use your default login. I am going to configure my own login page, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two out. And uh, when you do form login, I'm going to do a dot, and then I'm gonna provide the URL where I'm going to provide my own login page. And that is using this dot login page method. I'm gonna provide this a slash login. So I'm not really asking it to have the login page be at a different route. It is still the same slash login route. But the very fact that I have put this dot login page here means that Spring Security says, okay, I'm gonna stop providing that 
page at slash login. I'm going to expect you to do it because you said you want your login page to be over here. Okay, now that's fine. The other thing that I need to do here is to allow everybody access to that login page. You don't want the login page to be hidden behind the login requirement, right? So I do a dot permit all to say, hey, Spring Security, this particular login page that I said I'm going to be doing, allow everybody access to it. Don't expect people to be authenticated for that. Okay, so with this, we have told Spring Security to kind of back off and not provide the login. And of course, I need to add the at enable web security annotation here to have this class take effect. Now, notice what happens if I run this now. I'm going to run this without making my own custom login page. Now, notice what happens. I can access the same slash login route and I get an error page. So, this is basically Spring Security saying, hey, you said you were going to provide your own login page, so I am not doing this for you, and that's the reason why it's failing, right? Now, what's left to do? We have to create our own login page and have the slash login map to that page, which is the rest of what we need to do here. So what I'm going to do here is go to my code, create a new controller. I'm going to call this login controller, and this is what's going to be listening to the slash login route. And all I need to do with this controller is have it map to a login HTML page, okay? So I'm gonna make us a controller with the add controller annotation. I'm gonna create my own method here. Uh, I'm gonna call it login, and then this is going to return a path to my login page. I'm gonna just call it return login, and I intend to put a login.html there, okay? And now, I can call this, I'm gonna put a get mapping here, and I need to map it to the slash login path, okay? Just put a slash in here as well. So now, this controller is going to listen to the slash login path, and it's gonna redirect to a login.html page. There has to be some uh, markup, there has to be some template file somewhere, okay? Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is to create that template file. So I'm gonna to go to static, uh, actually, in the templates directory, I'm going to create a new HTML file. I'm going to call this login.html. Okay, and here I'm just going to put some placeholder uh, values here. This is not going to be an actual login page. I'm just going to put an h1 and say login screen. Now, this is not much, but the goal is when I access the Spring Boot Spring Security application now, rather than the default login screen, I should be seeing this login screen with just a header which says login screen. Now, before I run this, there's one other thing I should do. I should go to pom.xml and add one dependency here on a renderer, All right? So I've added this dependency to Spring Boot Starter Time Leaf. Timeleaf provides a rendering engine which lets Spring Boot know that there are templates in this directory and it needs to render it. There has to be some rendering engine for us to do this whole controller to a template file mapping. All right, so since we have done that for the login controller, we have a controller file, a controller class, which redirects to a template file, which is the HTML. There has to be some templating engine. So I'm gonna add the Timeleaf here. And I'm also going to be writing some time leaf syntax soon. So with that, we should be good to go. I'm going to run this project again. And uh, now if I refresh the page here, you see our our simple HTML page is now showing when you access localhost 8080 slash login. Okay, so we have first asked Spring Boot not to render its default login screen. And secondly, we have mapped our own login page. And we have told Spring Security to go to that slash login when a login page is actually needed. Okay, so now the final step that's left to do is to make this login page actually functional by adding the the right elements in there. Now, rather than have you see me type this whole thing, I've just copied this over from the Spring Boot uh, Guides example. Basically, what this page is, is a time leaf page, and uh, it has this form, which is going to be the central part of this login page. It has a form which has an action slash login with a post method, okay? So when you submit the form, it's gonna make a post request to slash login. So what you're seeing here, th action is time leaf syntax. 
uh, you can, of course, create a simple HTML form and make a post request to that. But uh, with Timely, we're getting a bunch more benefits here. So let me walk you through that. Uh, again, inside the form, the core elements are the username, the password, and then the submit button. Here you have the label for username and then the text box for a username where the user can enter the username. Similarly, a label for a password and a text box input for a password. And then you have the submit button here. The submit is what's gonna trigger this form to make a post to slash login. You have a couple of UI elements here. Uh, there's one for messaging invalid username and password. If the user enters an invalid username and password, what the la slash login post method is gonna do is redirect back to login get, but with a query parameter which says error. So you're gonna to listen to that query parameter slash error, and if that exists, then you print a message which says invalid username and password that shows up above the form. And then you also have a query parameter logout. So when the user actually makes a logout action, the logout is going to remove the session for that user, and it's gonna to redirect to the slash login get with a logout query parameter. So when you see a logout query parameter, you have to print a message which says you've been logged out. And then again, show the login screen, all right? So this is no styling, so this is not gonna look good, but at least it should give you an idea of how you can customize this. You can have this show anything here, right? So I can say, uh, this is Java Brains login page. Okay, so you can customize it, you can brand it however you want. And uh, let me actually run this now. Okay, now if I were to refresh, I'm going to get this very rudimentary page, which has, like I said, no styling at all, but it has the username and the password, page, you know, uh, text boxes, where you can enter your username and password. I'm gonna copy the Spring Security Generated password, and I'm gonna paste this here for the username, user. And if I were to hit login, I should probably get an error page because there's nothing here mapped to the root. But basically this indicates a successful login. We were able to log in with our custom login page. So this is how you create your own custom login page uh, in Spring Security. In the next tutorial, we're gonna be talking about an interesting aspect of Spring Security that we haven't covered, which is method level security. What we've been doing so far is using Spring Security in the context of web application all the time, and we have this kind of a implicit assumption that the user is a web application user and our application is hosted on a web server. And there are a bunch of things that we kind of did as a, de as a result of that assumption. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can do method level security, where you don't have to assume that this, the application is a web level application. It can be anything, it can be anywhere, and you can have methods be secured from accesses using Spring Security. I'll teach you how to do that. See you in the next tutorial.